Next up, we have another section B question taken from the DSC paper. Now, um, now this question, the first challenge is to put the number in the at the proper position at the correct place. All right. So first of all, we have say um, angle ACB is sixty degrees. Right. Angle ACB is sixty. So this one is easy. This angle is sixty. Right. No question about it. And then we have AC is AD is twenty. Now you have to pay attention to this one. AC will be this red line, all right, and the other one is AD, all right. Some people put the red line at the wrong place, and she said, "Oh, so these two they are both twenty. That that is a grave mistake, all right. You have to be very careful because if you put the number at the wrong position, once again you are working on the wrong question, all right. Be very careful. It's a common practice in DSC paper not to put the numbers, not to put the numbers on the graph." On the diagram, but put it in the description, so that you have to do it on your own. You have to put the right number in the right place. All right. So if you know the way I do it, I would put them in the same color, so that they will be easier to tell which line is what. All right. So we have BC is BD. So this is BC in blue. All right. We have BD right here. Once again, be very careful. All right. Don't put the other line to be twelve. Only these two. They are twelve. This is a twelve. This is also twelve. And then finally, what else? We have CD. The yellow one is um, fourteen. All right. So this yellow one goes to fourteen. Okay. All right. Before you work on the um further calculation, I suggest you to look through all these numbers again. To make sure they are indeed correct, all right. Otherwise, you just waste a lot of time working on the wrong question, all right. Make sure you put down all these numbers correctly onto the diagram, right? Okay, so first of first of all, we have to find the length of AB, all right. This green line, AB. This green line, AB. Okay. So to do that, once again, we look at the focus triangle. Now, AB, um. A B leaves on the triangle A B C and also the triangle A B D. All right, we have little idea about A. We have well, we have the blue line and the red line, but we have no angle about A B D. All right, but in triangle A B C, we have the green line, the blue line, and the red line, and we have an extra angle. We know the sixty degrees here, so now we have more information on that triangle, so we can start working on that triangle. But actually, if you think about it, this this object actually is also left right symmetric. All right, if you draw the symmetry here, you know um, there is a left right symmetry. So I would guess this angle ADB is also sixty degrees. But that's another story, another day. So let's look at the triangle ABC. All right, so we have this angle sixty degrees. We have the twenty. We have the twelve. All right. So right away, you can use the uh, SAS cosine formula. SAS cosine formula. All right, it is a typical SAS cosine formula. On your calculator, it is formula zero two. It is formula zero two. All right, and then you input twelve, twenty, and sixty, and immediately you have the answer to this one. And AB will be uh seventeen point four cm. All right, this is the length of the green line. Usually, I will leave more more decimal places, better accuracy for the intermediate result. All right, um, if I need uh some more decimal places, it would be like that, right? Of course, the final answer is round to three significant figures. All right, it's seventeen point four. All right, now okay, so far so good. But one point about the marking scheme, right? What there's a technical about the um examination. If you look at here, there are two marks for this length of AB. If you just write down the green thing, right? You just write AB equals to blah blah blah, right? Because you did it on the calculator, so you have no step. Now in that case, section B is more strict. Ah,、uh, it will only give you one mark for the answer. All right, it will only give you one mark for the answer. You will lose one step mark if you just give the answer like this, right? So while the calculator is good for ah、uh, checking the result, it is better that you have a formula. All right, you have a formula. For the um calculation, all right, it's not wrong to give the answer, but just giving the answer will only give you one mark for the answer, all right. You need another mark for the steps, all right, and that step will be the cosine formula. 
So um, and then for cosine formula, if you just write a square is b square and c square minus two b c, cosine a, you will not get that one uh one mark for the method, because the the marking scheme specifically says that you must apply the formula. You cannot just copy the formula. By that I mean you have to write down which is a, which is b, which is c. So you have to write down a b square equals to um b c square and a d square. You have to name the lines. All right. You cannot just use general generic a b c to represent them. All right. You have to name the lines so that this is a b c, this is a d. All right. To get the one mark. All right. This will score you one method mark. All right. You have to you have to tell the marker how do you arrive at that solution. And worse, if you make the mistake in the formula, even though you get the even though you get the right answer, you will not get either mark. You will lose both marks if you make a mistake in the answer in the equation. All right. If you put something like this, even though the answer is correct, all right, but you will score zero mark. All right. So um, you have to make a choice here, right? If you include everything and everything is correct, this will score you two marks, right? This is two mark. This is zero. This without this one, all right? Just the answer is one mark, all right? So that's how we how they score the two marks, all right? Just the answer one mark. Correct formula full mark. Wrong formula, even though you have the right answer, still zero, all right? So part B is very strict in awarding the marks. All right, please be very careful. Now next up we have part B. Part B asks for the angle between A B C and A B D. Now once again, the first important step before you start any calculation is to identify the angle. All right, before you answer the what question, you must answer the how question. Before the how question, you must answer the where question. So we are in the where question now. Where is the angle? How do you find it? And then what is the value of the angle? All right. These are the three important question in a three D problem. Where are these answer? Where is the height? Where is the angle? And then how to find it? Now the how question is easier. We did all the um um. Solution of triangle before the how question usually is S A R uh, trip uh, triple S cosine formula S A S cosine formula A S A all right the how question usually they are about sine and cosine formula all right and the trigonometric ratio the trigonometric ratio sine theta Pythagoras theorem and so on all right these are how we deal with the how question. And the what question will be the uh, calculation, the arithmetic calculator stuff, formula 0, 01, formula 0, 02, all right? But now let's focus on the what question, uh, focus on the where question, all right? Where the angle is. All right, so angle between two planes. First of all, you have to be very careful about which plane, all right? We are talking about this plane ABC, all right? This one and ABD, oh, that is ABD, I'm sorry. This is ABD, all right? And ABC is at the back, all right? Once again, don't do the wrong question right. Be very sure that yeah, you are working on the right question. Okay, so for um angle between two planes, we find the uh, common line. The common line is the green line, right? The common line that is the line, um, a, a line of interaction intersection between the planes A, B, C, and A, B, D. So along the common line, from the common line, we draw perpendicular all the way to point D. All right. This purple line is perpendicular to green, yet it leaves on the plane ABD. So this be a right angle. All right, this is a right angle. So we can recover that triangle. Perhaps it's useful. All right, this is red, green, and blue. Um, we have a perpendicular line going here. All right, it should be red at the bottom. All right, so let me label the points B, A, D. All right. Um, let's call this pawn P, uh, pawn X, all right, okay, on the triangle. Now, this is a right angle, okay. I'm, I'm actually uh, putting this red, green, blue triangle layout on the paper, all right. Now, at the same time, we have another 
perpendicular line, right? That is perpendicular to the green, yet it moves on the other plane. It moves on the plane ABC. Once again, this is also a right angle, all right? This is also a right angle. All right, knowing that the two angles, they are, the two triangles, they are congruent. So ABD is just the same as ABC, all right? So it is the same triangle. The two purple lines, they are having the same length, all right? And the angle between the two planes will be the angle between the two purple lines. So we have one purple line here. We have another purple line here, all right? They are, are having the same length. And then we have the blue line, uh, sorry, we have the yellow line connecting them. We want to find this angle. Let's call it theta, all right? This is pawn X, this is pawn C, and pawn D. So all we need to do now is to find angle theta from these triangles, all right? The purple lines, they are connecting to this and to this respectively, okay? All right, so um, now, you know, we already have the yellow line. So all we need to do is to find the purple line. We know this is 12, this is 20, all right? And then the green line, we know it is uh, 17 point something. We, we find out the green line in part A, 17.4, all right? Let's uh, give it a, in a better accuracy. So to find the purple line, there are two ways. There, well, there are a lot of different ways, right? You can use the uh, triple S cosine formula to find one of these angles, say, for example, angle A, all right? And then you can use a sine ratio because the purple divided by the red is sine A, all right? Purple divided by the red. Or um, you can use the other angle. You can use this angle, all right? And then it is the blue divided by the purple will be sine B, all right? Or I would prefer using the uh, area. I will invoke the Heron's formula because I have the two, two uh, I have the three sides. I have the red, green, and blue. So we can use the area on one hand. On one hand, using Heron's formula. All right. On the calculator, it is formula zero three. All right. It is formula zero three on the calculator. You input the three lines twelve, twenty, and the, the answer from part A. And then you have the area, all right? On the other hand, the area is half BH. It's half green times purple, all right? On one hand, it is the Heron's formula from the calculator. On the other hand, it's half BH, green times purple. So right away, you have the uh, length of the purple line. And the length of the purple line, DX, will be according to my calculation will be 19 uh, 11.9205 all right this is the purple line so that's the purple line here and it is also the purple line here all right so finally cosine theta we can use triple s cosine formula to get theta with the purple square and the purple square all right minus 14 times two of the purples Minus 14 square, right? Divide by twice. Purple times purple. So we have theta equals to 71.9 degrees to one decimal place. All right, so that is the angle between the two planes. Now, it seems very simple at this at this uh, solution, but there are so many mistakes people can make, all right? First, be very careful on which angle, which two planes you are talking about, all right? If you uh, misread some of the words, if you misread, say you're finding out the angle between these two planes, then you are never getting this. You will never get the right answer. All right. Secondly, you ask the where question. All right, where the angle is, where the line is, and so on. All right, and then you think about how to do it. Do you have a plan approaching to the question? And finally, you take the plan into action. You actually calculate the value using the tricks you did with the calculator and so on. All right. So in this question, we find the uh, angle by looking at the common line. The green line is the common line. So along each plane, we draw lines perpendicular to the green. The two purple lines, they are both perpendicular to the green. All right. So we find the length of the, pur uh, the purple line as the height from area. The area on one hand using Heron's formula. On the other hand, it's half BH, so we can get the purple line. Once you have the two purple lines, we can use triple S cosine formula to find the um, 
angle between the two purple lines, and hence the angle between the two planes. All right. So that is part B. All right. Part B is five mark, uh, four marks in part B. Okay. And then we have part C. Part C is a moving point on the slant HAB on the green line. Right. Describe how angle CPD changes as P moves from A to B. Okay, so now this pawn moves. All right, this pawn is pawn P is moving. All right, it's not guaranteed to be ninety degrees, but it is moving. So we have this pawn P is moving along the green line from A to B. Now between pawn P and C D, we have this angle here. So we want to know how does this angle change as moving from A to B. All right. Now, as you can see, the triangle here, the triangle P, uh, sorry, the triangle CDP is left-right symmetric. All right, we have the triangle here, and then the baseline is always the same. It's always the yellow line. All right, so the size of this angle actually depends on the length of the pink line. All right, the longer it is, the smaller the angle. If the pink line is short like this. Then we have a larger angle, all right. Now, so this idea will give you one mark, all right. We know as our PD becomes longer, we have the angle becomes smaller, all right. Let's call this angle alpha, all right. On the other hand, if PD is small, then the angle is large, all right. If it is further away, if pawn P is further away from CD. Then we have a smaller angle. If pawn B is closer to C D, we have a large angle. All right. So now the question is: Is the length of P D going up or going down as it is moving from pawn A to pawn B? All right. Now, if you look at tri look at the triangle on the left hand side right here, right? Pawn P used to be here, all right, and then it gradually go up. All right, and then moves to pawn B. This is how pawn P is moving. It starts from here. Let me uh draw it in a thicker line. All right. So this is pawn P. All right, and then pawn P gradually moves on the line. All right, eventually it hits B. So the longer it is, the smaller the angle. The shorter it is, the larger the angle. All right. So the question becomes, where is P D the shortest. For the shortest P D, we have the largest angle. All right. So now the description is: we have pawn A moving to pawn B. All right. But the angle does not change in a uniform way. There is a pawn X in between. Pawn X is the ah uh, perpendicular pawn we just calculate. All right. If we have the movement between pawn A to pawn X, look at the pink line here. Right. It is shorter and shorter in this journey from A to X. All right, the line P D is becoming shorter and shorter as it moves from A to X. All right, so if P D is going down, the angle is going up. All right, from A to X, the length of P D is going down, so the angle is going up. All right, and then for the next part of the journey from pawn X to pawn B, the length is going up. All right, because pawn X is the shortest distance, so the length is going up. If the length is going up, the angle is coming down. All right, so this is the description. The description is from A to X, the angle goes up, increasing. From X to B, the angle goes down, is decreasing. All right, so that is the description. For this part, All right. So that's another section B long question on three dimension problems.